What up, Gary Heads? I got something cool to show you. I went ahead and got myself a Nook Glow Light 4E. This is going to be my first e reader ever. Saw it on Barnes and Nobles, decided to get it. Bookshelf running out of space. The usual. So let's go ahead and crack this open. This is the Nook Glow Light 4E. Promises um, weeks of battery life, 8 gigs of storage on board, non expandable. You have capacitive buttons on the side, programmable for uh, swiping through pages. You have a dedicated home button here for the Nook. It is type C. And then you have the power button up top. It promises a, a constant glow light ability, which illuminates the this, this six inch display consistently. Uh, adjustable screen brightness, Wi-Fi on board. Let's turn it on, see how this looks. This is what you can expect as a common startup time. Because it is an e-reader, it is a dedicated reader, I wouldn't expect it to be any faster than, um, say, like music players and things of that nature. Here we are, fully loaded up. The screen has a, a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of raisivity there on the bezels. Some people might call this somewhat of an outdated design, but it's not too bad. You know, it's you're you're carrying around an entire library with you. It does take PDF files, EPUB files, if you have, say, your own library. So this is what you're going to expect from the home screen. You just have your recent or what's in your library. Then you'll have your recommendations here. If I click up top, I have the ability to change my um, illumination light levels. I have it on adjustable so I can see it in direct sunlight. Wi-Fi is turned off. I'm going to turn it on now. This is connected to my Barnes & Noble's account. So if I wanted to, I can either purchase books through the Nook or I can purchase it through the um, the website by selecting the ebook format, purchasing it through my account, and it is automatically uploaded here on my Nook. So it has a library button here. You'll see here uh, my shelves. The shelves is like a little organizer. This is uh, the title page for all the books that I currently own. This is what you can expect for most of your library to look like. So if I click on the center screen here, it's gonna take me to my current reading selection. As you can see, there is a slight load time. Do not expect it to be as fast as a smartphone. Um, however, like I said, you're carrying around an entire library with you. So this is what it's gonna look like. This is the font size. It shows you the percent down here of how much of it I've read so far. This is uh, the amount of time that it takes me to normally get through a chapter. And through these capacitive buttons here, I can click through screens. Now, I wish there was somewhat of an indication or, um, you know, somewhat of a uh, maybe like a little indention there on the capacitive buttons and not so smooth. So that way, if you're reading in bed, you'll be able to know whether or not you're pushing the forward button or the back button on either side of uh, your page. So that's something I wish they would have included with that. Other than that, navigation is fairly simple. If we go here and go to all settings, it'll take us to, through to the, all the settings that we have on this um, particular device. The glow light, that's gonna be your screen brightness. If I go to reader, this is going to be your programmable keys where you can decide how you want your forwards and back buttons to be on your tablet. Go back, we have application settings for library. 
This is what the library is going to show you. This is additional filters. So we can choose downloaded only items, annotated items only, unread items only. We can have show samples. Sample items will appear in all titles. Uh, show items in shelves. Next page in all books and shelves. Sorting by author. So this is just uh, some cataloging features. If you so happen to build up quite a library for your books and you need to separate those items, you can go through there. This button here is obviously the store. This button here takes you to blogs and various other reading materials for, I for book ideas and such. Let's go back home. And then this is the search bar where you can search up any titles that you'd like obviously you need to be on Wi-Fi so if you're out and about you're you're not going to gain access to that feature unless you can connect to some Wi-Fi if you are at a Barnes & Noble store and you utilize your reader then you'll have access to various things in the store Nook does provide you with a cloud service so you can download the Nook application onto your smartphones and or tablets or other devices signing into your account providing you with access to your library Let's go ahead and give this a once over. It is a little bit fingerprinty. I wish they kind of um, would have uh, done something about that. But this is a cheap little e-reader. It's not super expensive. If you look through the market, you'll notice that there's a bunch of other different things on the market. And these things can get rather expensive through other companies. However, Nook is keeping it fairly cheap. And you can utilize that money to build up your digital library. Maybe buy books digitally that you already possess and really start a nice little collection to read through. I find that um, with this little e-reader here, I actually read a lot faster through my material. Some of the books I have are quite heavy. And if you're sitting down and you can just grab this thing and you can read two, three different books at a time if you get bored with one. Um, or if you need, you're trying to smash a chapter real quick, I find this thing to be fairly consistent. The capacitive buttons here on the sides for navigating through the, the pages of the book are pretty swift. Or you can swipe. I'm trying to keep my spot in my book so I can finish that. Currently, I'm going through the Dune series. All right, so... That's going to be all for the Nook. This is the new Nook Glowlight 4E. Currently, so far, I am enjoying it. If you are a person that also enjoys e-readers, or if you have a, quite of a library and your shelf is getting kind of full, or you want to get more into reading, you're just looking for a more convenient way to do it, I do recommend starting off with your e-reader journey with a Nook. Um, again, this is my first e-reader, so I have nothing to compare it to other than looking on my cellular device. And while my cellular device may have a lot more features, it can be a lot more distracting just due to the fact that my phone's doing so many other multitasking things um, and applications and notifications and that such coming up throughout my reading. Um, if you're reading for longer periods of time, it could also harm your eyes reading in the dark or you could be squinting reading in direct sunlight I find with this device that does not happen and so here I am in direct sunlight with my Nook e-reader I have not changed any of the settings as far as um, the screen brightness on my Nook e-reader it automatically adjusts itself and if you look here pretty much at all angles there's no reflection there's no glare even directly flat I could still see the words extraordinarily clearly it could still read my device that in and of itself to me holds a lot of value because it is way different from a smartphone device now that we've touched on all the positivities of this device there are a couple of different things that are concerning to me and I'd like to go over those with you guys now so upon first look of the charging port it kind of seems a, um, a little iffy I'm using um, just a generic cable, not the one that came with it in a box. And, you know, moving it around a little bit kind of seems like it kind of just goes in and out kind of like that. And all I'm doing is just touching the cord. 
the cable so I don't know what's going on with that charging port but you know if I um, just kind of play with it a little bit it'll go back to saying that it's charging so that's something to be concerned with and worried about for the longevity of your device. So something interesting to note, took my Nook reader to work with me today. And um, here at midday, just getting out of work, been using it on and off again during breaks and lunches. And notice that it has a cool down feature. So this thing, although it's not um, a, a very high power capacity device, it does overheat and it does need to cool down. Now I haven't officially turned this thing off all day since I've been using it. It's just been going into sleep mode during inactivity. So it does need to cool down at times and can shut off on you if need be. Okay, so I did check with the original charging cable that comes in the box because you also get a type C charging cable in the box. I'll unbox that for you now. And I am experiencing the same issue. It is a little bit finicky with uh, its connection. Just a little bit finicky for my liking. Um, even when you're connected to a PC, it's still a bit finicky. It'll go in and out of connection to the PC. PC has a hard time recognizing this device. However, I can still get it to focus in and function right. I just got to make sure that the cable is kind of sitting steady still at an angle that the Nook will take it and read it. Um, and like I said, that's something that could be concerning for some people. This is what the sleep screen looks like. So if your device is left on, you're gonna get, it's going to go into like a power saving sleep mode. So if you guys are into e-reading tablets, let me know if this is worth your upgrade. It's retailing right now at $120. It, I, it is a $20 charge fee for the um, warranty, extended warranty. Barnes & Nobles does promise to help you resolve any issues that you're having. So um, if this weekend as I continue with this device if this continues to be an issue for me for the charging port I'm just gonna swap it out go get a new one so I don't have any further issues because I don't intend to upgrade for a long while um, other than that I do appreciate this device for what it is it's pretty cool and I intend to keep it for a while and enjoy my myself some reading so go ahead and like and subscribe to the video I'll give you guys more content and I'll let you know if I decided to change out this device or um, if I decided to keep this thing and give you a more longer term review here maybe in about a month if I decide to not exchange it. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all of you. You have a great rest of your day.